Hello? Can you guys hear me? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hola, como están? How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing good. Hey, Brazil. All right, cool. No, it's good. So if you guys, uh, if you guys can reply where you guys are um, tuning in from, that would be awesome to get this thing started. I'm not Portuguese, so I can't understand some of the stuff you guys are typing. But uh, you know, I guess it's kind of where where did I learn ZBrush? I'm just learning at home, just practicing. You know. I think one's from Russia. I'm not sure what it says, but um, hello. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> the moon. Awesome. How's my microphone sound? I'm, I'm using a different mic today, so I just want to make sure it sounds nice and clear. We'll get started in a few minutes. Just kind of letting people trickle in. We'll be uh, working on some, uh, some mass today. Make sure we're live in the in the actual website too. Give me a second to check. Cool. Looks like we're live in the on the main website. Uh, can you guys reply? I guess uh, face, uh, Facebook looks like it's working. Um, YouTube looks like it's working. Um, any other channels? Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. That's good to know because sometimes it sounds so low and people are like complaining that you can't hear me. Uh, you guys can hear my music too. It's like very low, just kind of ambient background music. So let me let me start with some links. Uh, get this started. Yeah, I was out the last um, the last two weeks due to internet, uh, not having internet. Uh, one week, uh, one week, my um, some squirrels shoot through the actual fiber cable. And they came and replaced it. It took them about a week. Um, and the next week, uh, there was just some outage. So, kind of sucks. But I'm back, so it's all good. Uh, you should be able to to put a link up there, um, either through Facebook or, or, or YouTube. There should be a little uh, something on the right side. Uh, you should be able to put put on something there. But yeah, some of these some of these links are just to my website. So let's uh, let's go over that real quick. Um, so just kind of give you a good little background. So a little bit from my website that kind of shows you what a uh, type of work I used to do and do currently. Um, so feel free to check that out. You know, other things, mentorship, other things that I do here as well. So if you guys want to learn more, just check that out. I posted that on there. Uh, if you guys want to check out my Instagram, feel free to do that too. So we have a variety of things that I post on there. 
And then there's also my Gumroad. If you guys want to download my UI, uh, check it out, download it. Um, yeah. And I, just, I think I put a link for buy me a coffee in case you guys want to buy me a coffee, which would be awesome too. I don't know why I'm coughing this morning, but, uh, you know, it happens. So, yeah, so here we got a little, one of the masks that, I'm, that I'm, I did on the stream. I guess somebody was telling me they were looking for this for the stream, and I guess it didn't record. That's the time we were having issues with, with restream. So, I'm not sure if it's up there. I'll have to check. Uh, this will be the next mask that I'll be kind of printing. Um, you guys saw the previous one, which was the... Uh, the Oni, um, Oni mask, you know, you guys can see that. And that was printed in two pieces. Uh, but some of these, I think we might take a little bit of a different approach and maybe try to print them in smaller printers to see, you know, I know a lot of you guys have smaller, smaller printers that you guys, um, you know, c can print like half or a full mask. So maybe we'll figure out how to cut that up and then show you guys how, you know, you can still, you guys can still do it with that, with the smaller printer. What do you guys think? Uh, but yeah, we'll continue working on this guy. And then I also started working on uh, another design. Let me see. This guy, that guy. So I was thinking about uh, this design that I have. Uh, this this bug that we started on the string too. And I was actually considering what if I just kind of cut that and make that into a mask uh, without the top part. So we might uh, take a, a approach at that too today. Uh, how can we... You know, multi-purpose and stuff, and you know, because I'm not sure if I'm gonna do anything with this model, so it would be cool to kind of actually put it to use for something like this. So it might be a it might be a cool idea. But in that, and I was also playing around with another idea, which is uh, doing like an orc, doing an orc, uh, an orc mask. So I blocked this out last night, um, which we can go over the, the time lapse of some of this stuff. I just kind of. Started blocking it in out of a sphere and was thinking, well, what if we had an arc? That would be kind of cool, right? And then get more people to back off. So here's a little bit of kind of where I did, you know, spend like, I don't know, 20 minutes just kind of blocking this stuff up. Yeah, I'm not sure why it doesn't have me on the map, uh, on, the, on the calendar. It, it's not on there, which is kind of weird. I guess they forgot to add me. <laughs> Uh, but you know it happens. Maybe maybe because of the error that I had last uh, two weeks ago, where with the internet being down, they had to maybe remove my my entry, and they probably accidentally removed the today's entry as well. But not a big deal, you know. But yeah, so I was looking at some of the orc. Uh, I was looking at at uh, at these guys, kind of as inspiration. Like, what would it look like if we had a kind of an orc mask? So. I'm kind of thinking something with uh, with with hair, so we could sculpt some hair, like a little bit of a beard, and it might might blend a little better. Uh, but it could be, I don't know, interesting. Actually, no, I think if we do the teeth separate, like uh, like what well, one thing that I would do again for with this guy here, is maybe print the these these big canines or these big teeth at the bottom separate, and maybe the secondary ones too, and then kind of key them in. Um, so I'm thinking that we could potentially do something like that, you know? I just don't know if I want him with the mouth open, kind of like, or if I want him with the mouth closed. But I think it'll be much cooler with the mouth slightly open. And that could also be the way you breathe. So it could be a combination of both. But yeah, I was kind of like looking at the ones with no beard. And yeah, they look okay, but they don't look as menacing, I think. Uh, just kind of looking at different inspirations, you know, like looking at what it might look like with no with no no uh, no beard or you know like maybe we could do something like this but i'm thinking maybe we could do something a little more straggly a little to kind of blend it out but if it's sculpted then um it'll be cool when once once it gets printed out that's kind of the idea i'm thinking about uh for for this stuff yeah way cooler with the mouth open right yeah that's what i was thinking too so i'm just kind of taking inspiration from those things and trying to figure out like well if you know obviously the nose they have a scruncher nose that, that's more pointy. So I'm thinking uh, it kind of needs to line up to my nose. It doesn't have the holes don't actually need to line up, but just the, the, the overall uh, figure of it. So like you have this, this fall off and then adding little details, right? Like a, a ring here 
uh, and then this key, this teeth could be kind of keyed. So I think it'll be I think it'll be cool. So maybe we'll we'll get started with that one first, and then go from there, and then maybe uh, work on the other mask. What do you guys think? Yeah, I was also like thinking like a alien, alien like aliens three or or one of the alien types. Uh, that's what I was looking at right right before the stream. Like, what if we did something like that? You know, with uh, I don't know, a little more alien like. So the so we have a couple of different themes we could play around with. But let's get started and start doing some, um, you know, making this guy look a little more angry. But yeah, because I know a lot of you has been re kind of requesting, like, how can we, how can we make some cool masks, especially during these times, we can make something cool that we can we can wear. Or maybe the whole dentures are separate. Yeah, that could be right. Like maybe the the big tooth and the small tooth are kind of stitched together, so he, he has like one that's rotting. That could be kind of cool too. Yeah, yeah, that for sure. Like, uh, I'm open to suggestions. I'm just this is just kind of the block out part, you know. We'll add some poor details and scars and all kinds of other stuff. Right now, I'm just trying to. Get the overall feeling for this and see how, how it's going to work out. If it's going to work out. If not, we could always move on to another one. But that's the whole thing, right? We're just trying things. See what sticks. Some stuff sounds great in paper. And then you try it and uh, it doesn't actually work. But maybe this will work for us. <coughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of what, what I'm thinking of doing this this stream. You know, keep it a little fun, a little more different. I know some people are, a lot of people are fans of Warcraft and stuff. I, I am too. I like orcs, so it'll be cool to kind of do something with that. And it also be crazy. You go outside and it's like, yeah, people are going to want to stay away from you. Oh, that's just a scan. So the, the scan is just kind of there just as a, a placeholder so, so that it kind of contours a bit to my face. It doesn't have to fit my face exactly in case I want to give this to somebody else. Um, it's just there. I have another one that's uh, more, you know, simpler. So I was using that one as well. So it, it's just there for um, just for that. Sure, yeah, feel free to post questions if you guys have any. Um, it's all good. I'll be blocking this stuff out and then we'll see we'll see where we go with this could be cool could be a terrible idea but um I think it'll be it'll be a little fun a little different <coughs> see where is the nose lining up yeah so we have a little bit of room to play with the nose May maybe make it a little more because one, one thing I like about the nose of, uh, of this guy is the way it's, it's kind of like a, I guess like a little heart or a little. I kind of want to mimic some of that. I think that that's a cool shape. Get it away from too human. But it looks like we have some some room to play around with. So, yeah, you know, I was playing around with the idea of a ring. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I like it or not. Um, could be cool, could be not cool. But I, I think it's part of the orc, kind of the way orcs carry themselves. You know, so. Oh, you mean like like the different color that I shoot that I pick for my interface? It's just under UI custom UI. Uh, let's see, uh, it should just be UI colors. I think it's like one of these. I just click. I, I like red, so I just picked red. I think by default it might be gray or, or, or orange. But it should come in with these colors if you if you have that, you know. Yeah, try that. You could change it to customize whatever color. Also, I'm left-handed, so. You might want to switch all these all these tools to the right hand if you need to, because I know most people are not left-handed. So <laughs> feel free to do that. You know, once you have this, feel free to delete things you don't use, uh, that type of stuff. But yeah, let's see what we can do with the nose. I guess the only thing we have to be careful with the nose is. Um, Let's change this brush size because this brush size is kind of killing me. There we go. 
is uh, making sure that our nose is not, our real nose is not poking through. So we're going to be pretty sketchy about this right now, and then we'll, we'll get more detailed uh, as we're going. Let's see. Yeah, so I have this one, I think, set for 4K. So if you have a, a 20, a 1080 uh, or HD resolution, I would suggest maybe moving some of these top things that I have up here, like the brush dynamic and some of those things over to the bottom where there's space down here. And then that, that way, if your screen is a little shorter, then it's fine. But the other thing you can do too is if, if you get them off the screen by accident, you could hold control and scrub, you see? Um, you can move them, you can move this. If you just hold control and click anywhere on the, on the gray interface, you can, you can move all this stuff in case you lose it. You see how I have more more stuff down here if i want to get to it I, I could move just this up just by holding control but you know eventually you'll find out the most the ones you use the most and you could probably put them around but i would say just try to use the control that that helps a lot especially since there's things that you don't use all the time those are the things you want to kind of uh kind of keep in the in the extra section that you don't really see if that makes any sense hope that helped yeah that's that's the one that's uh I, I used to have since i have different monitors you know like uh like at work i don't work with a cintiq i work with a, a tablet um sometimes this interface doesn't quite work so i need to figure out ways to do it but um luckily all my screens have been at least 2k so most of the stuff could kind of doesn't get clipped as much but try that i think that should that should help you let's find some uh better music than this because this music is a little boring so where's everybody tuning in from? Everybody um, staying safe and um, still keeping social distance and all that stuff. Hopefully you guys are, you know, because who knows if this is real or not. But uh, at least if it is, at least prepare yourself, right? All right, that's some better music or let's go. Yeah, that sounds cool. So we're just kind of blocking some some of this stuff out. We'll see where it goes and uh, what kind, what we can do with it. I kind of want this thing. Kind of want the nasal labial fold to kind of continue. So I'll probably do a little bit of a, a blending there. Let's see. The nice thing is that when you have Dynamish, um, oh, Burbank, oh, you're close. Do I, do I know you, IR Sculptor? I live in the valley, so I'm, I'm pretty close. Uh, let's see, Los Angeles. Awesome. India. Nice, nice. Wow, India, that's that's cool. That's uh, <laughs> quite a distance from here. It's cool, cool to see. What time is it over there right now? Right now it's here, it's 9 a.m. So I'm sure it's probably super late over there, right? Yeah, what do you guys think about this orc idea? You think it's uh, cool or not? Not that, not that exciting. So here I'm kind of just trying to radiate some ideas of how it might radio when he's angry. Um, like some of the pulls that I might, I'm thinking I might might have to adjust, you know. But just sketching those in roughly to see kind of like if this whole nose part is it's working, it needs to be deeper. Here we can see that it's kind of starting to penetrate my nose, so we might need to shift it forward, but it's all good. 9 p.m., oh man, yeah, it's late. Well, thanks for tuning in, Dubai, awesome. Okay, I heard. Uh, let's see, uh, how to land your first job. Well, that's a tough one, you know, you just have to apply different places, make sure your portfolio is up, up to date. Uh, if you have a link to your portfolio, feel free to post it. That's um, give you some advice if you if you need any. There's too much, too much. 
But yeah, this is, uh, let's see. crisscross in here and start getting some of these these wrinkle lines man I'm thinking the beard because then it'll make it look more more menacing that's the, one of the things I was thinking on oh thank you man appreciate it oh so you're pretty close yeah I'm like maybe 20 minutes from from uh, Nomit or from that. I'm like in the in Mission Hills area, like in the, in the valley, but. A little bit of a cheekbone, you know, just sketching some of this stuff out. Let's add some more teeth to see what those guys are gonna look like. So some of these teeth were just simple little, let me see, let's, let's show you how this guy got created. Cause I know some people have questions about teeth. So these guys were just a sphere. I just kind of stretched it out, you know, kind of went on the profile and then I flipped it. And I just kind of placed it. So it's not, not a, see, it's not a difficult thing. I just know so some people are like, it needs to be perfect. It's like, just get in the ballpark and we'll see. Yeah, yeah, feel free to post some links and then uh, we could check those out. I'm always open to helping people with this stuff. So it's not a big deal. They won't have to go bigger on these teeth. I feel like they're not they're not big enough, especially for a menacing orc, right? Sorry, just have my phone blowing up over here. I'm trying to figure out what the, what's that all about. So you can see, this is just a simple cylinder that I'm just kind of placing on there. Right now we're just trying to see how how big what kind of curve do we need because uh, the guy we the guy we're kind of referencing has some big big chompers so we need to kind of give them a little more curvature. You know they're like making his whole mouth stay open. I wonder how much saliva these guys are are just dripping when they're talking. Let's see, let me make sure I can keep up with this. Let's make this chat a little bigger because I'm starting to lose messages. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I go to Zebra Summit too, so maybe we have met or, or been around each other. Oh, thank Yeah, yeah, no problem, man. That's why I'm here to help. So we have Ian uh, Robinson. I hope that's cool. I'm probably going to share your, your screen right here. Share your share your work well, that's cool that's more in the, in the cartoony realm but this is uh, pretty cool pretty cool stuff man nice that's good yeah well especially as a as a, well what's one thing i wanted to kind of clear up i guess a lot of people was like well what do you do for work i do more uh you know like high-end characters and stuff like that that are more high-res detailed um so one thing is like some of these workflows that I'm doing are more concept based, not so much what I would do in production. So making sure that you guys know that, uh, know that this is not the way it works. Oh, it's cool. Some 3D printing. But this is just to get ideas out. I will have to read to apologize all this stuff. If I wanted to make it like production ready and that type of stuff and put UVs on it and all that. It's a nice piece. This um, the Wonder Woman. nice nice i think it also depends what kind of work do you want to be doing like are you trying to be a 3d modeler you're trying to be like a collectibles uh, sculptor uh what, what is your what are you trying to achieve but yeah this is nice work man this is uh cool nice yeah, that's that's one thing you guys want to practice uh, because that's what we do at work, right? It's replicating, replicating work, replicating from concepts, from an idea or something that's roughed out, and like how do you continue that? You know, how do you make that come into 3D and figure out the issues? So it's nice that you're already doing that from these from these concepts, which is pretty cool. Nice, I like the spider.
We'll say if you want to do production, I want to see like more retopologized versions of this stuff, you know. Uh, but if you want to do collectibles, this is like, you don't need to retopologize anything. So I will say you're on your way, man. This is uh, pretty nice work. You just need more of it. You just need more variation now. Like I will, I will, I will say, add a couple more males, a couple more creatures, so that you have a nice variety of work. So you have some females, which is nice. So maybe move away from the females now, do something else, so that you have like at least. Maybe I see you have like three females, three males, and maybe three creatures. That was true. And maybe some robots too, to show that you can do a little bit of everything. Cool. Hope that helps. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, no problem. Providing some work. Uh, let's see. It's all good, man. Student and not student, like we're all on the same boat. You just we're just in different parts of it. Yeah, yeah, some silicone stuff, right? Like saliva, saliva drips. One thing I like too on the on the concept is that he has some rings on the on the lip, and it kind of hangs. So I need to make the lips more meaty, but you know this is just kind of the block out part. Hey, how's it going, little cat? Oh, uh, little ball. Bungo cat. Yeah, if you want to do collectibles, I say just keep doing it. And then also, if you want, what kind of collectibles? Do you want to do more like the SciShow, like superhero stuff? Or do you want to make more of um, like cartoony stuff? So I guess geared towards that, that realm. So stick to that and do more of that. And also different styles, which it looks like you kind of have the idea of the different styles, but maybe, you know, pick some more, um, like more like your Wonder Woman one. That, that's, that's, I think that's your, like your strongest piece. I hope that helped, uh, Ian. Yeah, same thing, I are, if you want to do collectibles, that's kind of the pick, pick like your favorite company and try to mimic what they do and, and the quality, you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't update my art station just because I'm lazy. I should, I probably will in the near future. You know, because there's a lot of stuff that I have from Avengers, Infinity War, Infinity, I forgot the name of the movie, whatever. Uh, and there's a couple other movies that I should probably update. But, you know, eventually, it just sometimes you get busy with work and that takes a step back. And, you know, you, you already you already have a job. So maybe it's it's good to let other people that don't have jobs kind of take, you know, push push their work forward. Cool, cool. I'm, I'm glad it helps. Yeah, yeah. I need to, anytime you guys need advice, feel free to hit me up in, on Instagram too. Uh, yeah, they are yeah, like. Uh, what do you mean, like uh, temporarily, like doing more, like like the masking that I'm doing, like 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 actually mask or or the actual mask. trying to understand your question a little better yeah yeah keep mask if it's about the masking in, in zebras i keep unmasking and masking so that i i can isolate areas i tend to do that a lot especially if i'm trying to get this lip to be thicker and like nice and round you know i need some more bulk at the bottom so masking it helps quite a bit and just having these areas kind of touch too that, that helps see so we start getting more of that meatiness I feel like I want to show more of the gums, like maybe their gums are kind of rotting. So maybe we can do that, some of that too. Because who doesn't like rotting gums, right? <laughs> See, we start adding some more gums, start pushing some of this stuff back. And this area, that, that area that was just showing, that's uh, where well, we're going to duplicate some more teeth. So let's do that first. Make it feel like he has some more teeth. Uh, so I'm just going to duplicate and then just moving them off. So right now they're pretty symmetrical and I'll eventually break them off. You know, they don't have dentists so they don't keep, can't keep their teeth all nice and crisp. Yeah, your art station should be more like professional work. So, you know, try to post only your best there. In Instagram you can post whatever you want. But I want to say, you know, when people are looking for people for work, uh, 
they tend to check their their art station more so keep it more professional if you can yeah be more be more selective of what you post on there yeah for my art station i only have like a few concept stuff that i did nothing uh, nothing crazy i don't even have any of my professional work i should i probably will but like i said it's all about time you know and i still pretty busy with work so i don't need i don't need to get any more work Yeah, when I started, also, like, Art Station wasn't around, so it wasn't a thing. It, it seems to be a big thing now to where people post post all their professional work and, you know, keep it all nice and clean. And then the website support now is there to, uh, to make a custom portfolio, which is nice. Uh, I just never migrated to it. Uh, I probably should at some point. But, you know, I'm a little old school, so I'm a little... A little older and uh, some of those things don't take precedent for me because most of my work that I get it's a uh, kind of word-of-mouth type of work you know so it's not um what can I say it's it's I don't need to show my portfolio that much but when you're coming up it's pretty important to have some stuff up there Oh, somebody else post a link. Let's see. I didn't see any links for any more work. Except for Ian. But yeah, you know, the main thing is just keep keep practicing. Keep keep working on this stuff. Let's see, so what happened here? Something kind of broke, but we'll fix it. Yeah, I also do a mentorship that it's kind of limited because I don't have a lot of time, but I help people uh, get their portfolios up to date because I also I, I'm the guy that kind of hires people and interviews people for their for the jobs. Um, so you could potentially learn something from that as well. If you ever, ever get to the point that you're, you're ready for that as well, feel free to check out my site. Come on, all I had is smart resim. It's taking a while. Well, we'll give it a second and hopefully it didn't crash. didn't crash but it didn't make my model symmetrical so let's just undo that <sighs> it's kind of let's get rid of X all well, the other ones are right in my, my side so so something had happened there where I noticed that the, the, the I wasn't sure if it was my lip or the gum, but it seemed like the gum was off. So sometimes what you have to do is just, uh, you know, resim it or um, let's change this to 64. Uh, kind of cut it up because sometimes, you know, like when I try to do the smart resim, it kind of freaked out. And this is the same piece, so that means this guy's going to have the same error. Uh, so let's get rid of X. You only pick one side. I selected delete hidden and all I'm doing is mirroring we have some overlap not a big deal press X dynamesh and now we're back to being symmetrical all right so let's keep tweaking this stuff all right let's see so let's make these guys even thicker <laughs> And I think we have to make them thicker from the back side. Two 
kind of fill in this gap. It will suck to be these guys and trying to eat food. <laughs> well, at least it will seem it seems hard, but we'll see. Yeah, mirror wall is your friend. I, I tend to use it. I tend to just use the the one that comes in the. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, Subtool Master. I like that one a lot. I use that one like constantly, so I just kind of keep keep that guy on on deck. So here I'm thinking a little bit about the 3D printing. You know, like how are we gonna make this guy? How are we gonna make this work? So I could potentially print both of these teeth together and make my life easier make and then key them in so it's okay if they're not touching and filling these gaps you know as long as I have like a section where they where they meet you know like basically at the gum line that will that will probably be the best part I don't want to inflate those guys too much just want to move them. you know some of these guys are messed up and But like I say, we're just blocking out some ideas right now. We don't know which way this is going to go or what the deal with this stuff is. So so it probably needs like two more, two more teeth. So let's move these guys out a little more. So right now they're mirrored, but once I make them, I'll, I'll kind of put some asymmet asymmetrical features on them so that they don't um, they don't look they don't look too bad. So it's okay. So we can move their buddies around a bit. Yeah, see, it's kind of coming together. Um, at least I think it is. That's cool. You see, you guys are making connections just by joining the stream, which is awesome. That's what this is all about, right? Like hooking up with like-minded people. That's one thing that's pretty important, I think, uh, is surrounding yourself with those type of people that are like-minded so that you guys can help propel each other forward in your careers and life. Sometimes when you have people that are not into the same things you guys are, it, kind of, it makes it hard for you to kind of talk to them about this stuff, you know? Get excited about a new brush, that type of stuff. No, I don't have my own tutorials because usually I teach at different places like at Nomen or a couple different schools. So I tend to teach in person, uh, but I am considering making some gum roads um, potentially. I just don't don't really know what what people would be interested in, like uh, workflows or just sculpts or how do I how do you sculpt this, how do you sculpt that, or how do you sculpt for production. So if you guys have suggestions, feel free to let me know because that stuff to me is uh, pretty important because I you know teach you many different types of things, but I rather really teach you something you guys want to learn than suppose something that I think you guys should learn. Especially if different people are at different stages of their career. Some of you guys need more guidance on one thing than the other, so, um, you know, if you guys have any ideas, feel free to either shoot me an email shoot, or shoot it here or, or feel free to. One thing I've been teaching on the side a lot, I, I guess, I guess some stuff kind of privately is uh, 3D printing stuff. So some of the stuff I've been kind of just helping people with uh, people that are getting into 3d printing because i do a, a lot of it whether it's uh sla 3d printing or whatever you know just prepping your models how, how do you how do you think about like hollowing stuff and that type of stuff uh, but yeah i also teach workflows if you guys want to know like xgen or you guys want to learn how to do this or that i'll be posting some more i could post some more st that type of stuff as well But it always helps to have your feedback on what do you really want to learn. And I 
But yeah, I guess that's the. Uh, okay, yeah. Basically, what I've been teaching at like at different schools is like production. How do how do you make uh, something production ready? You know, uh, like the topology, edge flow, uh, redirection. Like, what, what's an optimized topology for like low, medium, high resolution? How do you get to the super HD detail uh, and ZBrush that type of stuff? And also like hard surface. Like you know, if you're making a robot or you're making some kind of cool thing that has like a cyber cyberpunk type of stuff, how do you blend those together? Cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. That type of stuff, uh, I could definitely probably put it in a little block so people only want to learn topology they can if they want to learn more about uh, theory or, or UVs of the next steps maybe I could put them into little modules in case you guys already know some of those things or want to brush up um, I could definitely do some of that I think that, that could be cool yeah because I see I see a lot of stuff online and a lot of it is incorrect or, or done by people that are not professionals and, and they act like they are and I think it's misleading because then you go to a job and think you're gonna that's the way it's gonna be done and it, it's not so that's a, that's another big one too oh cool what kind of stuff do you 3d print bring these comes up Yeah, mostly 3D print stuff for, my, for myself for like shows like Monster Palooza, but too bad there's not any shows at the moment. But those are the type of shows, Designer Con or um, Lightbox Expo, those type of things, you know. Uh, the biggest 3D print uh, is probably something for like a costume, like a cosplay type of stuff, you know. Like pieces or like that mask that I made, um, it was like a giant mask for Halloween. It's like a kind of like a goat head or some kind of cow head. Um, all right, let's continue with this. We have a little bit of a chin. It's been it's been some time, so let's uh, let's save this before we continue, and then it crashes because that does happen. Yeah, I just have this this thing called Pretzel Rocks. It's like free music that's not doesn't get taken out by the streaming when you post it on YouTube. So it just has yeah, but it's kind of some Dungeons and Dragons RPG stuff, right? see so I feel like we need more side like more more of the side rule type of stuff so let's see let's let's think about some beard stuff too because uh At least blocking out some some of some beard stuff. Let's see how that that would look. If it would look cool, that's why we're keeping everything as a separate object. Because sometimes this stuff doesn't look good, and you do it, and it's you know it's a waste of time. But in this case, if it's a waste of time, we could just get rid of it. Oh, you got laid off. Oh, that sucks, man. Is it because of this quarantine uh, pandemic stuff? Yeah, I know a lot of people are looking for work, uh, which sucks because it's, it sucks that their employers can't keep them on. But it's understandable understandable on both sides, you know, like businesses are not doing right. Or especially where if you work in film, right? Right now, there's no productions going on while the, or new productions just started. But for the last two or three months, there hasn't been anything. So it's understandable that there's no there's no work coming in. So it makes it tough.
Let's keep this super low. Let's see, 64. Let's see, uh... Oh, you guys are good and you guys are chatting a lot. That's great. Oh, that's cool. Miniatures for pandemic. That's that's awesome. Yeah, you can. You keep it really simple. Just kind of make sure the silhouette of those holes are, are, are there and they should be fine. For the for the cape question. Yeah, you need to get started in Halloween stuff now, especially if it's gonna be something huge, you know, you wanna be the Mandalorian, you're gonna have to print a lot of pieces or something like that, you know. Yeah, you could do that in transparency map too. It depends if it's gonna be a game, that that's also you could just do an alpha map. But I would say just kind of cut the geo and maybe use the alpha map to add like frame or little chunks that are fly-offs. Yeah, there's a lot of cartoony stuff, right? Yeah, maybe we need to put some more photo real type of stuff. Okay, retopo baking. Yeah, maybe I, mean, I, could, I could do some of that. I, I do a lot. I've been doing a lot of substance painter. I do a lot of marring substance painter. That's a. Those are my main two, two apps. Uh, for texturing. Not six hundred and sixty-five. More like sixty-five. Huh? Let's give it a minute. I typed in an extra number. <laughs> Yeah, so I have a second monitor, so that's why I have I have actually three monitors. I have one right directly above and then one on the side. And I put reference on one, or if I let's say I'm rendering something, I could kick off the render on side and continue to work on another Maya or, or, or work on ZBrush on my Cintiq. But usually when I'm working in my in production, I just have two monitors and a tablet. So, you know, that's a, that's another thing that you might want to consider. You don't need three monitors. Oh, set design, that's cool. Yeah, miniatures are an interesting problem, right? Because sometimes you'll scope something that's supposed to be kind of real life and then um, like something that looks, oh, look, that went really high, let's go to 65. There we go. Um, because sometimes when you shrink all that stuff down, the detail gets lost. So I think a, a lot of the, the stuff for miniatures, it's all primary and secondary forms, how they read when they print it out because uh, the kind of type of shadows they cast. Because if you were to print something that's a miniature out to be big, you're going to need all the detail that's missing. But the other way around is making sure your, all your primary forms are set up nicely. So maybe I'll, I'll do a tutorial on that too. I'm working on a few things. So maybe I could do something like if you were to print something life size, like a, something wearable, as opposed to something that you're going to print the small. What are the things you have to look out for, and do some test prints? Oh, pandemic layoff. That sucks, man. Well, good luck for trying to find a job. I think it should be picking up, and you should be you should be good. But yeah, what do you guys think this the uh, this the design is going? Without the beard, I feel like it's not going anywhere. Like it feels kind of lame. But now with this, you know, even blocking this this beard off or just just real basic block it, I think could could help. I'm hoping to use some of Pablo's um, Pablo Gomez's uh, brushes. Um, I think that would help. Uh, I've been looking. I've been looking at what people have been doing with those and what he's been doing with those, and it's pretty awesome. So I think that would that would help. But I just kind of want to get the main. I downloaded those earlier to kind of play around with them, but I want to do at least kind of a basic block out, you know? Um, of kind of what I'm thinking for the hair.
but this could become a big mess so i kind of also want to keep it not too too long because you don't want it to become way too long so we'll see oh thanks thanks i'm glad you like it the way it's going Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea to work in layers. I, I use a lot of layers, so I think it's a good idea to work in layers for the one-to-one -one stuff or the mini stuff. And you can always take the layer, take that detail down, or punch it up to to read better at, at different scales. Yeah, 3D printing tolerances and all that type of stuff, it's, it's pretty, yeah, especially keys, right? Like a lot of people make, I see pe people making square keys and it like kills me because I'm like, it's going it, to, the tolerances sometimes are not good and it's not going to fit. So you always have to taper them down so that they have something to kind of fit into and not just a straight, uh, like, like if you make a square to square and it's slightly off and it's too big, it's not going to fit. But if you have something that was pointy, it might help to kind of keep it, um, you know have a slide in there and they put a little bit of glue and think about what kind of glue you're gonna add you need to make room for that uh, things like that so maybe uh, I, I've been thinking it for a while now to make uh, some stuff based on 3d printing uh, so maybe I'll make a make a, maybe I'll make a class or something I don't know we'll, we'll see if there's enough interest it's worth doing then I'll definitely take the time to help you guys and do it but if it's not you know I don't want to waste my time when people are, want something else that's not 3d printing related but I think uh, there might be uh, something there. That's not too bad. Starting to come together. I feel like the I need to make I want to make the teeth even bigger. What do you guys think? Like these these two teeth. Um, even maybe maybe they need to be rounder and bigger. But let's see. Um, Yeah, because I was looking at some of the masks they made for um, the Warcraft movie, and they look really bad. Like, they don't even look like those characters. Uh, let me see if I can find one. It was, like, pretty disappointing because I'm like, oh, my God, they let that out. That looks pretty bad, but who knows? Uh, let's see. Yeah, here's some of the ones that I was looking at. So there's like, there's this guy, right? And then this is the mask, which kind of looks kind of lame. And there's here's one other one that's not, they don't look, they don't look as menacing or as a stylized. It's almost like they tone them down to be more human. And I'm trying not to do that because I feel like it doesn't look as cool. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. What do you guys think? That's why I feel like if I make the teeth bigger, it might look more, more beast uh, mode, right? Like more more crazy let's see sorry it's so many questions not today yeah yeah those new those new brushes look amazing right good thing he released them for free because he has he has so many things that are awesome he's a really good uh part of the community zebras community to help give stuff for free that helps you get stuff done looking looking quicker that looks really good Yeah, primary shapes are, are even, in, even in big sculptures, it's like the main thing, right? But I think in miniatures, it's the main thing that pops up because they're so tiny. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. I think the beard is going to help, right? Yeah, once, especially once we separate it from the skin look to, to the beard, like actual fibers, I think that might be. More exaggerated cheekbones. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. I think because uh, it should read from here right like a little more i think you're right let's uh, let's add that right now there you 
you gotta make the cheekbones a little bigger or a little point higher. Maybe this could be a mask that also maybe wears behind the ear because it might be heavy now that we're making all this stuff. But we'll see. Maybe if it's hollow, it doesn't matter. Because uh, one thing I noticed that when I made this hollow and it's so thin, it doesn't weigh anything compared to the 3D print. The 3D print was heavy and this is like so light, you know, and, and also flexible. It probably could break if I push it too hard, but there is some flex to this stuff, so that might be fine. I think round 3D keys are okay. Uh, they, they seem to work. I think it's, it's a matter of they have some tapering. And, 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 you know, spheres have the tapering, so it's okay. It's just when you go from square to square is when sometimes you have problems. That's why it's better to use, like, a bit of a triangle or, or a bit of a tapered square. Unless you're making something that's not so hollow, not so um, shallow, I think squares are probably okay because of magnets, like you're saying. Yeah, I'm thinking of chipping one of the teeth, right? Like like getting rid of one of the like one of the teeth. I just don't want to do it quite yet until we figure this out because if not it's gonna not look as cool. Like one's actually pointing, the other one is not. I think that that's a Yeah. It's a good idea. Had some striations of, of the growth, right? But yeah, I totally agree. I think one, uh, maybe the maybe the one that's chip is the one that has uh, the ring on it, or or some sort some sort of, of thing to kind of keep it together. Maybe that one is attached to that one, so that um, it doesn't fall off because he'll probably look silly when not having a you know. They're putting some detail on that, like subscribing. That uh, that would be cool, I think. Yeah, I could look at some samurai masks. Maybe that could help too. Yeah, this is kind of, uh, I'll show you guys if some of you guys tuned in a little late. Kind of what I'm looking at for reference. So you see these guys have some pretty massive teeth, right? Like, they're not always sharp at the end. They're kind of, so maybe the broken tooth could be kind of like this, right? Like it's broken there. One of them's up. So this is what I was thinking for the ring. Something like that. I, I'm not sure about this idea. I think this idea is kind of a little silly, but... Yeah, we'll see. Then there's also like this stuff here. So I don't know. We'll play around with some ideas. We'll keep it all separate. And if we don't like it, we just uh, we just make something else. Uh, let's see. Sorry, there's so many questions. This is good. Uh, yeah, if you're starting, if this is your third year, I would say just make as many mistakes as you can. So try to sculpt as much as you can and to get all those, uh, I guess like you're going to, when you're starting off, you're going to make a lot of bad sculpts. So you want to get those out as soon as you can. So as soon, the sooner the better, you know, because then, then you get to your good ones. So you have to make those mistakes. And that's something that people are kind of scared of doing. And I think it's, you just need to get to it, you know, the faster you get to them, the better. So I would say just make those mistakes. That's like the, the biggest advice I can give you. Just make those mistakes as quickly as you can. Yeah, I think you could use re uh, Remesh by Union. You can do that too. I tend to always keep my keys separate and then just kind of do a, do an inverse and kind of cut it using the, you know, like different modes of, of Boolean. That's kind of what I use. But, you know, may maybe I could go through that one of these days. When Maybe when I'm keying the actual teeth out, I could make something like that. You guys can see. Yeah, that would work for, for, for that type of stuff. So let's continue on this guy. So let's 
I'd like those guys to be bigger. The thing to keep in mind too is that teeth don't. Teeth are not in one plane. They're, um, you know, they're around your your. Like your your mouth is not flat from the front, so make sure that there's an offset for all these teeth to kind of have a, a curvature to them. Same thing with these guys, right? Yeah, see, these guys have some curvature to them. All right, let's see. Uh, that's right. Let's continue on the beard. <laughs> he looks like you. <laughs> I'm sure he looks like a lot of us when we wake up, right? Especially if we have crazy beards. So let's uh, let's go with that guy. Let's see if we can load some of those um, Pablo brushes. See what we can do with those. Where did I save these guys? <laughs> you before coffee? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's so many of us, right? I haven't even unzipped them yet, so give me give me one second to, to do this before I move on. So I like playing around with these shaders and kind of switching around them because sometimes you'll see things that um you don't see with the other shaders, like things that are needed. So yeah, I definitely didn't unzip those guys. So let's go to this. folder just disappeared it's weird all right so let's put these in um, so I think he recommended you put them in a C drive with uh, where you have other brushes because then uh, you'll see thumbnails as well I think if we went to our brushes and see start up. Start up brush presets and there we go. So these are the thumbnails I was talking about. I haven't used any of these, so we'll find out right now how they work. Oh uh, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. So I guess one of the main things when doing hair, or uh, specifically on the front. Let's see. Sorry, I put it I'm gonna go right on top of the, the chat. Hey, how's it going? Uh, is turning off symmetry right at the center, right? Because the last thing you want is for things to look symmetrical. I guess we could also use this in the reverse mode to kind of start help cutting some of this stuff. And this is where we need, maybe need a little more resolution. Let's go to 128. And we can use this in the reverse mode to kind of taper this stuff in. So it doesn't feel like it's just
But it's just a rough block out, so let's see let's see some of the other brushes what they can do. So here on the sides, that's when I recommend going back to symmetrical mode. Oh yeah, that works pretty well too. Oh. So let's turn back that off. Let's try. So we're just roughing this in. We're not saying this is the final or we're just trying to see what we can get out of these brushes. So far it's not too bad. It's starting to get a little noisy for my taste. So we can start hitting this with a little bit of smooth. Let's see what other brushes. So now that we have that at least roughed up, now we can play around with more of the where is it starting from. So let's see some of these references. Since they don't seem to trim their beard much, it seems like we have a little bit more. Seems like a lot of them have the beards kind of coming outwards, but I'm not sure if I, if I dig that too much, but let's give it a try. It's not too too terrible. Let's work on that nose because it should not be penetrating through my actual nose or where I was going to be wearing this. You guys bored? You guys want me to switch to the more mechanical one? See what we could do with that? Or continue on this guy? Uh, thanks, man. Yeah, I just wanted to keep it fun, you know, make sure you guys are learning and keeping it fun. So that's why I asked. But thanks. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. That's kind of the idea, you know, just kind of a basic block out.
Yeah, so I'll be 3D printing this stuff and then kind of breaking it down depending on the printer I'm going to do it. Um, if I want to print things separately or not. But yeah, I'll be printing the final thing. Maybe prepping it here too. I'm not sure if you guys even care about the prepping. I know it's not the most exciting, like. Yeah, those brushes, you see, with those brushes, I was able to make it look like a beard pretty quickly. You know, it could need some fine tuning, but it already looks like kind of hair. And if you paint it with the, with the right highlights, it should be pretty good. Yeah, I'm thinking of printing the teeth separate. Uh, depending on if I start merging some of them, I might maybe do the denture or the, the gums and the teeth as a separate piece that you pee in uh, onto the main thing. But, um, you know, I don't know. We'll see. It depends. Cause there's like this big gap here, you know, I could probably close that gap a bit too. Or put some more teeth back there. It's so like something else to block it or, or put the tooth all the way to the back there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, definitely separating the teeth cause they, they usually are the biggest problem that appears when 3d printing, especially if they're thin. Do some sculpting on these teeth, break them up a little bit, and then we can start doing some asymmetrical stuff. Having some of them be a little blunt too, maybe. Nope, not the way I want to flatten them. So like until I get these giant teeth right, I feel I'm, I'm not gonna feel happy with these. <laughs> it's like they need the right curvature. Yeah, I need any questions you guys have, feel free to post. <laughs> yeah, right? It's just like they're so sharp that if somebody gets close to you, you just like attack them. <laughs> chip one off. around that guy too. Make sure that the, the reason their lips are so distorted is because of the, the teeth, right? 
Yeah, Gloria Mature would be cool. Kind of like that movie, right? Um, Attack the Block, where like the teeth were like green and glowing. That would be cool. Let's see. I'm not sure if you guys remember that movie from 2011. Let's see. Like this stuff, right? Where like all the teeth were like glowing. That would be cool. Yeah, I wouldn't be animating this stuff, so this is just kind of the way it is. It's just for 3D printing, so if I was doing this uh, as a real production thing, I, I would have to think about it in a different way. Yeah, the neutral would have to be different, and also maybe like the way it opens, like once it's all full, like jaw drop, like it would have to be very different. So yeah, this is not for, for production at all. Just want to make sure. Gums didn't quite make it all the way to the end. Uh, which printer? Uh, I'm not sure. It depends how big I want to print it, right? If I want to print it. All in one shot, I would probably have to use a race 3D or something bigger. Like if I were to get the the foreign labs, like the huge one, or or Piopoli Phenom or something like that, or the Frozen XL. But uh, since I only have the Form 2 and um, and a race 3D, maybe potentially race 3D, or if not, or if I cut it into pieces and then merge it and, and fuse it, then I could probably use a uh, high detail and do it in the in the foreign labs. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, glowing teeth material, you can, there is, I think, some materials, they have some incandescence, some, some glowing factors, but I usually don't, I usually don't really mess with any of the stuff, I usually just render outside of here, so I don't, I don't really worry about it, I just do it in Maya. Uh, the drop plate? Uh, what, do, what do you mean by the drop plate? Can you uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Some more resolution to this guy too. Well, the 28. First, let's save. Yeah, don't forget to save you guys often as you you guys are doing this because you never know when things will crash. Uh, draw menu. Like this stuff, uh, no, what, one thing I do sometimes do is I, if I put perspective out, I'll like play around with the person, you know, with like changing the lens, depending on what I'm doing. But I tend to keep my lens like 85 or 100, so I always keep it pretty, pretty far out. But, you know, not, not too much. 
I tend to work with without perspective a lot and then kind of switch back and forth between that and 85. That's why I have it down here. But yeah, that's how I, I know what you mean now. Yeah, resin would probably be the best one for detail, but you could also achieve a lot of good detail at this, especially at this scale, like life size in the FDM, you just have to wait a lot of hours. It just takes a long time. You also have to make sure you orient your pieces so that they don't, um, what is it called? They don't, they don't have all the artifact and all the supports at the, at where you're, where you're going to have the detail. Let's see. The two preview. Uh, for the music, I just type in. Uh, it's a little application you just install called um, called uh, Pretzel Rocks, and that's where you just they just have a whole bunch of different type of music. So you just all I did was go to the epic section. <laughs> like it's a lot of tracks. It's all free, so you can play it if you're doing streaming. It, it works pretty well. It's better than having it just be silent. Well, somebody posted a link for a glow material. So I guess somebody had covered that before in the Azzy brush uh, section. So there you go. There's your answer. There's always a tutorial out there. And then you have glowing eyes. Pretty cool. I don't usually use that, so it doesn't matter to me, but it's good that it's out there. So now I should hopefully be able to help you out with the stuff. Uh, I'm from LA. I'm from the States. But my parents are Mexican, so that's kind of where my background comes from. That music got a little too dubstep, so let's, I just changed the track. <laughs> yeah, but if you guys have questions in Spanish too, I, I, I understand reading, write Spanish and talk Spanish, so. So that's kind of where we're at with this guy. Uh, his, I think his cheekbones got a little, um, need to taper them back on. Um, it's not gonna be bulging out. Potentially can, but uh, rather not because uh, it needs to just kind of taper into your skin, not be rounded off. I think we need to make his nose a little wider just because we don't want it to kind of penetrate our nose. And if we're going to have a mask underneath that, But yeah, what do you guys think so far? Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I know sometimes you see stuff like this from the beginning, right? And all these masks or everything that I do looks like crap in the beginning. And I'm sure you guys have run through that, that process. And sometimes you give up on certain things, but if you just keep pushing them, you know, it's all about getting those primary shapes. Like here, I'm starting to see some things that I need to fix on the face, but once you see it as a whole, it's like if it's working, then we have put, you know, potential to put more work into it and, and actually spend some more time making it, uh, making it work, you know. And I think that's like the when you're starting off, it's one of those things that you need to kind of get over, over it, you know. Like it's gonna look like crap in the beginning, and that's okay because in 30 minutes, 20 minutes, it's gonna look better.
Yes, I think limited is, is the best way to go, right? And then from there, when you actually need the brushes, then you can go ahead and, and use them. But I think in the beginning, I, I tend to use move for most of my work and then damn standard, or I'm starting to use this knife tool a lot more. But those are the two main tools. And then from there, you know, we start using like those the hair brushes and things like that. But yeah, even for pores then later, yeah, I'm sure we can add more and add the wrinkle stuff. And as we're increasing resolution, we'll start, I'll start fixing a lot of these things, little artifacts that I've seen, you know, where things should be uh, convex, not concave, to give some of this volume back, you know. But yeah, try, try to keep it simple. And, and that's one thing I was actually going to make a demo um, on how we use the new ZBrush, the free one, the free version. Uh, because I noticed that's very limited and I'm sure we can do a lot of stuff with that so that it kind of puts you in the sculpting mode and not like, well, there's 20 brushes I want to use. Like, no, there's two and that's it. Just move forward and keep using those, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. Can you believe I still haven't really gone out shopping to use my actual other mask? Which sucks because you know I had this for a couple weeks now, probably a month now, and I haven't um, been gone out with it. <laughs> so I'm making all this stuff that I haven't actually, actually haven't used. So maybe today I'll go out and actually wear it. Yeah, I also t tend to stay away from alphas until the very end. You know, like try to do most of your creation without any of those alphas. But, you know, to each his own, everybody has their ways of doing things. I try to keep it simple. You guys see that all I'm doing is just pulling and pushing, nothing major. Nothing too crazy, but, you know, that's just the way I do things. I mean, as long as you guys learn to do it from, um, you know, learn your workflow that's going to work for you. And how it's going to give you the speed that you want. And, uh, you know, that's the way to kind of approach this stuff. Yeah, happy Father's Day for all the fathers out there. I know it's, uh, I almost didn't stream, but I almost forgot that today was Father's Day. <laughs> Been so busy with work that, uh, see, so right now we're trying to get that, that fold that's kind of coming over the face when it's getting pulled, so. Just trying to refine some of those, the bigger forms. You know, how uh, that's kind of coming to the nose. But one thing I was doing that I noticed it's, it, it helped a lot was printing this stuff solid and then cutting the holes out later. So that's uh, that's something that's, that's pretty important that I wanted to kind of bring up. So I will make the holes, even if they're kind of deep, and then from there later, kind of ref uh, refine that stuff. Yeah, I'm just kind of fixing some of the major things that I already messed around with but that I know don't need to be there anymore. So I think for this, to me, the major breathing hole will be in between the teeth. So I'll make it solid and then cut it out later with a Dremel or something or that type of stuff. So here I'm just smoothing that stuff out so it's not in the way. Music is kind of interesting. It's kind of all over the place, right? It feels like I'm in Lord of the Rings and I feel like I'm in a tropical beach or some kind of Zelda game. Which is cool. Let's see. 
Maybe, we, we, I don't know, we might have to add a tongue. We'll see. But from there, this is just kind of the basic blockout, you know, kind of give you guys an idea of like what it looked like. It looked pretty bad before to, you know, we started from a sphere, so it's gonna look like a sphere until we put some work in. Let's see, I just saved it. Make sure you guys save often. Let's see. Um, Well, man, the the printers are getting cheaper, so that's the nice thing. That eventually, um, I'm gonna be doing some reviews. I, you know, I have some expensive printers that are not everybody can have. That you know, they're pretty pricey. Uh, but I'm I'm thinking of doing some reviews of purchasing some printers or working with some companies of, of some of the more inexpensive stuff to show you guys what you guys can do with that too. Because I think it's important that now that things are more affordable, it might take a little more work, but you can still achieve great results so i think um maybe that's something that i, I want to do so i want to show you guys that if you guys are interested just let me know um but i think that'd be a good idea because then if you guys you know maybe maybe also some of your you and your, some of your friends could pitch in some money to buy a printer and you guys all use it because eventually there's times when the printer is just down there and what he's using it um so that's another way to kind of you know get together with a friend or two and, and pitch in and buy an expensive printer and you guys share the you know the nice things that come out of that Uh, what template? I just used the... Uh... Oh, Hannibal. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, template? Uh, you mean like 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 head? Like what head would I would use? Uh, like one head that I was using in the beginning when I just started before I found my scan was just using the, the demo head. That's kind of a general fit or also the, the planar head. Like just this this guy here and just kind of give it a little more volume so it's not so flat happy father's day to you too man yeah the the, the bane mass I, I wanted to do more of those type of mainstream stuff but i'm kind of staying away i like doing original stuff yeah the material that i'm probably going to be printing is probably resin so that's probably the main material or if, if I go with filament, I'll, I'll do that on the right race 3D. Yeah, yeah, the, the enders are, are pretty good. I would recommend those as well. I have a CR10 as well that I use for backup. That's kind of like my, my backup printer when I'm printing so many things and I need another printer. And that works pretty well and it's pretty inexpensive. No, well, for me, I just saved for a long time, and then I just bought the printer, you know. I had, I had it since the first for, uh, Form 1, Form 2, but, you know, now printers are getting so inexpensive. So I'm looking into the bigger ones now, which are, that one are, are going to be expensive. Like, uh, they're in, like, in the 10K or 5K range. Yeah, yeah, great meeting you, man. Thanks for joining the stream. See you next stream. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of what we're getting to this with this guy, you know, it's, um, this is about probably an hour, an hour's worth of work. Awesome. Look at that. That's, uh, it's my favorite, my favorite thing to happen, especially in stream. But it happens to everybody, no matter what you do. So not a big deal. Let's relaunch that that guy and then we'll get we'll start maybe we'll work on the mechanical for a little bit one till maybe we'll do two i've been lazy and i haven't been doing too much i've been working on a couple of personal projects that i'm trying to wrap up so hopefully get these masks done and then print let's see Yeah, I'll show you a little, I'll show you guys a little preview if I can find it of something that I'll be releasing soon. Still loading up. Let's see.
Yeah. So if you guys know where, where this is from, you guys will know what I'm working on. But this is something I, I just wrapped up in Substance Painter yesterday. It's awesome. Keep going, man. It's two weeks. This is great. That's great that you're getting started on, on ZBrush. But yeah, it looks like this is going to need some more. Um yeah, I think this is going to work out. So if I cut the nose out, it'll be it'll be right kind of where my nose is at. So that's that's not a, not a big deal. Yeah, ballpark. And then cut on my mouth, so that's not not too bad. But yeah, it's kind of our orc um, orc version of our of our mass. Yeah, so let me let me see if I could find a link in my Instagram. So like my other mask that I printed. Uh, was two pieces since it, the form labs is not that big and I just had a key two keys in the middle and then I, I used epoxy clay to kind of move them together and, and stitch them you know or, or, or merge them together and then you know resculpt it a little bit but you know five ten minutes are resculpting the, the seam and make sure the teeth are all nice so that's kind of what I meant uh, so for this one I could potentially do that as well uh, I just have to see a natural seam you know like I could potentially do the muzzle and then stick in the, the nasal labial folds kind of together and that could be one print uh, or I could split just down the center and just re-sculpt just re a little bit of the, the, of the center Does that kind of help the, the, make sense? Well, I tend, I, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, Z-remesh this get more detail into it and then uh, dynamesh it uh, not dynamesh uh, uh, decimate it and that will make it way lower so it'll probably be like 15 million like uh, right now it's at 9 million right but if I start decimating all this stuff and optimizing it then it will become way 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 uh, smaller that kind of makes sense to you But like things like the ring that I was thinking about in the beginning, um, like that type of stuff. Like I could potentially find, if it's nothing custom, I could potentially just find something like at Michael's or Joanne's and just add this ring, you know, just find something that's like similar size and just add it instead of 3D printing some of that stuff. Because why 3D print something you can already buy and it'll take two seconds. Yeah, I do personal mentorship. So depending on where you're at, what kind of advice you need um, in your career I, uh, I try to help you out you know so if it's portfolio stuff or, or if you already have a nice portfolio like how to how to show your portfolio how to optimize all that stuff too and you know what interview preparation uh, that type of stuff so if you guys are interested in that I offer that as well and you know it depends if you guys need one session two sessions or if I, or you want to do the program there's a couple different ways of doing that but yeah, I said we have the ring, you know, we could do the ring. Uh, except another thing I was thinking about is uh, doing... Doing some rings like down here. I was thinking about that too. I think that could be kind of cool, right? Um, so let's use. I uh, want to make it a little thinner because it got too thick, right? The big one could be pretty thick, but the bottom one, the small one, the, the mouth could be smaller. <laughs> well, the thing is, it. 
all this stuff is going to be hollow, right? So it's just going to be a facade that looks heavy and bulky, but it's probably pretty light. You know, even the beard, like at some point, like I'll just do enough to curl it and then it'll, it'll be pretty light. But also, like, where are you going to be wearing this to? Like, if you're just going to the market or something or to a store, like, you're not wearing it for pretty long periods of time. You're wearing it for 30 minutes, you know, so. Won't be hopefully too bad. But, yeah, I know what you mean. It, that, that's, why, that's why with the beard, I was kind of like, maybe I need to make the beard smaller. But it feels pretty nice being so big and epic, you know. And it could also be cool, like, if you have a neck. Because usually what I'll do is wear another mask underneath. So if you have those masks, it kind of go and cover your neck and you have this one on top. It could potentially work. Well, we'll find out. I'll print it out and then let you guys know. That's the awesome thing about this stuff, right? That we can test it out, and if it doesn't work, we could always do another version where we remove the beard or, or make the beard shorter, more like a goatee. Uh, yeah, let me let me post the link. So I'll, I'll post the link to the direct mentorship thing. Yeah, check that out. Let me post some links of all the stuff here. That way um, you guys have them. Because I posted them in the beginning. And I know some of you guys weren't here. So, not a biggie. Oh, thank you, man. Saeed. I think that's that's the right name, right? Sorry. I'm, I'm terrible at reading names. Or terrible at reading in general sometimes. So. Well, that's why I'm an artist, right? I'm not too, uh... Let's see. Uh, potentially different pieces, because it's so big. Unless I get, like, some large printer, then I'll just print it on one shot, and that would be super awesome. But at this point, um, it's probably going to be multiple pieces. And that's going to be fun figuring that out, too. <laughs> So I feel like some of the major things I need to work on is some of the lip stuff and, you know, but right now I just kind of want to see as a whole what this might look like. We'll probably do some potential poly paint or also um, take it to substance painter, kind of like I did the other one, you know, that's kind of what I, let me see if I can find that. So we can see, wow, this time is time's flying today. It's great. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. And hopefully I'll start doing my own, uh, my own streams um, soon. I, I kind of want to do them in VR, so I might um, do a little VR slash ZBrush. So tune in. I should post a link for that too. So some of the things that I do, I do a prototype version of, of these, of all my masks, what, what the potential paint jobs I want to do. So this other mask that I'll paint too, this is another one that, uh, you know, just took it to Substance Painter, did a quick paint job. And it's like, okay, that, that seems like the right idea. So this one I'll finish uh, detailing and print that as well. So we'll have a few different masks to kind of chat about. Let me see, where is the web page? Yeah, I've been I've been really busy at work, so it's been hard for me to do the streaming, like the my personal streaming. But I think it's time to so subscribe, and then uh, hopefully you get notified when whenever I start doing that. Well, thank you, appreciate you guys. No, I just make them for fun. <laughs> I don't. I haven't even used the one, the first one that I made. But you know, this is just all for fun, guys. That's that's what I'm trying to, I guess, bring on the stream that it's all this stuff is. Uh, 
you know, you guys could work as a professional, but also have fun with this stuff, with the technology that you guys can afford to have at home or... Um, Thank you, thank you. But yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of where we got today with the, with this guy. We, we got a little bit further and um, I think it, it, it kind of worked out. Now we just got to detail the crap out of it and then should probably be good for printing. Probably working a little bit on the hair breakup. I want to kind of maybe do a, not flyaways, but more just like, clump separations you know like like a little bit of breakup which will be a pain in the butt to do in the mold or once I cast and mold it but I think it'll be well worth it but I also learned a lot because I, I learned to cast and mold my own mess which that was something I haven't done before so that was a good learning experience and now I feel like I have a better grasp at that, which is gonna help me for these guys as well. It's just a little breakup so it doesn't so you don't feel like there's just a straight edge, because one of these guys have time to go to the groomers, right, and get groomed or, or the barber shop. <laughs> or maybe they do, I don't know. Oh, thanks. No, it's not something I've done. I just love their demo. Their demo's cool, especially like the TV show. I like how dark it is. Now, it would have been cool to work on the their devil TV show. It's it's a really good one. Same thing with the Punisher. Big fan of those shows. Oh, that music just went dead, huh? Let's change it. There you go. Oh, glass inspiring. That's that's what it's all about. So the main thing about the casting, right? The casting was interesting and the molding because um, I wanted to take the risk and not cut these out because I was so excited to get this mask done. Which, in retrospect, I would I would cut these out next time, kind of like what I would do with these guys, uh, to make my life easier. Because when you're pulling the mold out, there's a big hole for the nose, right? Um, and when you're pulling against this stuff, these two are stuck together, so it, you have to really wiggle this stuff out. So if I didn't have this thing, it would be a much easier pull. Uh, and also making these holes less deep, so that there's not as enough a lot of material kind of in there. Because I ended up cutting them out, if you guys can see. You guys can see that I cut the holes out with a Dremel to be able to breathe. So I learned a lot about that stuff. Um, I, I want to start doing some more stories probably on Instagram. So you guys can follow there about like the cast and molding process of this stuff. I know a lot of you guys asked. And since I only did one, I didn't want to say like, oh, I'm the expert on this. I, I want to do a few more and then kind of give you guys my advice of what to what to do. Uh, one thing that I did do, I just kind of experimented with kind of different uh, silicones, like two different silicones, and that, that worked out pretty good. Uh, I'll post which ones those were. Uh, but the jacket was the main thing that I would change uh, because uh, the material that I use became really spiky. So every time I'm holding it to make a new cast and I have to slush cast this stuff, it kind of hurts my hands to wear gloves because it's so spiky. And I found a new material that I can put over it's much easier to uh, to play with, to like uh, put on, and also to uh, it's not going to be all spiky at the end. So 
I will recommend, uh, you know, I'll, I'll post some more progress stuff on this on this uh, blog. I did do a post. Uh, uh, let's see on Zebrush some on Zebrush um, Central about this. Uh, let's see. That kind of explains like here's some of the steps and there's some photos there, so you guys can check that out. Oh, thanks, Doug. Let me see if I can find a Zebra Central post. But I posted that a couple, I, probably like two weeks ago. It got some traction. Um, it was cool. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Because, uh, there we go. So this has some, uh, some of the making of. A little bit, not a lot, because I didn't document so much of it. But it has, um, you know, like the from the print to the from the sculpt, you know, the final piece talks about like uh, kind of the different steps, uh, the print, half of the print, the, the seaming, the final seam, what it looked like to make it look seamless, like it was never two pieces. The type of material I use, I'll probably never use a foam head again. That's one thing I would definitely never use, but live and learn, you know, that's what it's all about. Uh, some of the casting and putting some of the keys. So I 3D printed these uh, molds, these little molds for keys um, to make these rounds. So that way when you put it in the mold, uh, in the mold jacket, it stays. Uh, here's like the first copy of it, you know, and uh, yeah. And then some of the, the final stuff. So check, feel free to check that out. I'll, I'll post it on here. Any more questions? But yeah, Gustavo, I'll do some more breakdowns of this stuff. Oh, the draft stuff. Yeah, I haven't used any of that stuff because I usually have my methods of doing it. But it it seems it seems cool. I know it's a good option. Yeah, yeah, I could enlarge the, the camera. Uh, I have, I think I have another camera link on here. Let me see. Let's see too. I'm not sure if that's focusing or not. Uh, but yeah, this is like some of the holes that I was talking about. Like, see how they're on, they're on there. But yeah, it came out super thin and it's super lightweight. So, yeah. I know I almost never post on Zebra Central to be honest. I, I, after so many years, after almost 20 years of using this software, I think I posted like three times in the last 20 years. And even now, like I felt like I get more more feedback from you guys here than uh, on Zebra Central. But you know, it's worth it. I, I use the form too, so I'm gonna finish that Baby Yoda too, because I'm gonna try to print it life size, so like whatever he's like a foot and a half or two feet. So I'm gonna try to do that as well. So I just need to wrap up the clothes and then add some more detail. And he'll be ready to print. I'm actually thinking of printing out the uh, different like eyeballs, like where you can actually see the, the iris and all that stuff. But we'll see. Worst case scenario, I just paint it over and just paint it. You can, but I just wanted to make copies for my friends. Uh, I know some friends asked for it, and I haven't had time to do it. But now I have the mold so I can make more copies instantly instead of printing more copies. Yeah, it's too slow and it costs too much. It, it took about 40 hours to print where now that I have the mold, I can do it in literally five minutes. I can like the resin I think I have is like a five minute set time, 10 minutes to be able to take it out of the pot or to re mold it. So you can do them that quick. And you just have to do that cleanup once as well. No, I usually do stuff for animation, for movies, or for uh, that type of stuff, real-time work. I don't usually just do this type of stuff, concept work for, for work. Yeah, 
like 2001 or something like that. Yeah, I'm an old, I'm an old dinosaur. Oh yeah, anytime, man. Feel free to follow me on Instagram or feel free to tune in every other week when I'm doing these streams and then, um, you know, we could talk some more. If you have questions, feel free to, to ask. I'm always open to helping people. And, you know, just kind of wanted to give you guys a breakdown of how I do these masks. So if you guys want to do them or have uh, a mask you guys make, feel free to tag me. I would love to check that stuff out. I just scanned it myself. I have my own scanner. But you could do this, can do that. That's another thing people have been asking me. So I'll maybe make a tutorial on that. Uh, using your iPhone or using uh, photogrammetry to do that. That's not, not that bad. As long as you just know how to stay still, that's all you really need. Oh, cool. 2004. That's awesome, man. Yeah, ZBrush is an amazing app. You can make some, some stuff for film and movies and detail stuff, and then you can make stuff for printing and fun stuff for your projects, you know? Yeah, I think one thing I'll do definitely go and tweak on this is uh, the nose. I want to make it more of that sharper orc nose. But yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'll try to work on this stuff um, before next stream. Hopefully, maybe have it printed already and then you guys could check it out. So feel free to tune in. If not, maybe I'll probably work on this on my own stream and then you guys can check that out as well. You guys let me know if you guys uh, will be, be interesting to, to check out. Yeah, yeah, it, it can do so much now, right? Yeah, I've been using it tons for your... Uh, I've been using it tons for for all this stuff, you know, like doing the UVs, automatic UVs, and stuff like that. So, oh, is it so far? Uh, that's probably I moved my my mic. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's the important part, right? About the 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 scan is that if it, it, you know it will fit your face, you know. But we'll see how big this thing becomes because that could probably be a problem too if the beard is way too long or it needs to be kind of maybe pushed out from the side. It maybe it's like touching my chest. So maybe it needs to be pushed out a bit. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Well, maybe we'll do a, a quick rough per print. And then from there, you know, so maybe it's a little bit of that type of stuff, pushing it forward. So it still reads good from the front and the side. But yeah, thanks guys. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, which software do I use? Uh, I use um, Agisoft, the Meta Mesh or Meta Shape, um, Reality Capture, um, and a couple other ones. There's like two other ones that I use, um, but it depends what kind of results I need. Um, and I also have my own eye scan and stuff. And I also have an Arctic eBub that I share with my friends. So. We, we have multiple multiple ways and there's also iPhones and uh, other scanners we can use so there's many ways there's not just one so if you guys don't have one it's okay um, awesome well thank you guys I really appreciate you guys tuning in I'll see you guys next time hopefully you guys make some own mask of your own and um, yeah awesome thanks guys see you later bye yeah, Meshroom. Meshroom is another one that's really good. So I would highly recommend if you guys are looking into that. It's free, which is the best part. <laughs> cool. Thank you, guys. See you guys next time. Awesome.